Okay, we're live. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Uh, every week, we, uh, we're changing a little bit in our technology. Uh, this week, we've got a new uh, video capture card on the camera. Um, and we didn't test the microphone yesterday, the, the lapel mic. So actually right now what's coming through is my laptop mic, since I'm hoping that it's pretty good. The reason I'm looking off over here is that I have an auxiliary monitor where I can monitor what's coming through and then monitor what's going out on Facebook. And so that's why I'm looking over here and not at the camera. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Eventually, we'll get this straightened out to where we're, when we're live, we're actually live. Um, so I have to check all my screens all the time over here. Um, so what we're doing here is Facebook Live. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it's, uh, it's a replay. Uh, we haven't figured out how to do Facebook Live and YouTube Live at the same time. Um, so right now we're on Facebook Live and eventually we'll do YouTube, but we're recording it and we'll put it on YouTube and that's why you're watching it on YouTube. Um, if you're on Facebook and you want to ask a question, uh, just go to the comments field and ask your questions. Uh, that This live event is for you to ask questions, so it's for you, not for me. Um, so I want to answer your questions, and if you're on YouTube, what you'll have to do is to email us a question, and then we will answer it in the next Facebook Live. Um, so today, what we want to talk about, um, at least to start, is a question that we had, a holdover question from the last time, which was about selecting parachutes using Roxim. Um, so... Let me switch screens here and make sure that uh, my microphone doesn't go out. Um, so I switch screens. Let's hope the microphone is still working. <laughs> um, so what we're seeing here is Roxim and, and my desktop. Let me open up another um, browser window. Okay, so if you are on YouTube and you want to ask a question, it's best to send it through the email. And to do that, just go to our website. Um, and then over here um, is our contact form. And so you just click on the contact form. And let me turn off my mail so we don't get mail notifications every time. Um, one pops up. So this is our contact form here on our website. So you'll just fill out your name and the subject and a message um, asking your question. Um, if you are new to Roxim and you would like to use it yourself, um, you can just go to the shop and then go over here to Rocket Software and then click on Roxim. Um, and then this is where you purchase it, but you can also um, download a free trial version. Um, so if you just scroll down on that page, you can right down here it says download the three, free 30-day trial to test it out yourself. Um, so if you want to just test it out without paying for it, this is where you do it. And you get 30 days to use it for free. Um, and then after 30 days, it will just time out. Um, it, we are... It, getting notifications from customers, particularly on Windows computers, that it's giving them an error message when they install it, saying that it's not safe. Um, but um, we are a safe software. We don't, we've been, have this version for years. So um, go ahead and install it. Just override that safety message that allows you to install it. Some people are experiencing that their databases are empty. Um, this is on Windows, and we don't know why this is happening, but uh, we do have a workaround for that. Um, so just, you know, contact us through our contact form, and we'll get you up and running as quickly as possible. Okay, so um, last time um, we talked about 
uh, parachutes, um, how to select a parachute, and the question, and I don't remember who the, the person was that asked this question, but the question was, can Roxium select a parachute? So we have a typical rocket right here. Uh, this is the Amarok. Let's see if it's showing up there. Uh, this is a um, BT-80 size tube. It's a mid-power rocket, and in the back it has a 29 millimeter rocket engine. Um, you'll stick your 29 millimeter motor in it. Um, so we'll just go ahead and select, use this as an example to select a parachute. So um, what I have here on the screen is actually Roxim Pro. Roxim Pro is our uh, other version of Roxim that has some extra features and we're getting ready to release Roxim Pro to everybody um, as soon as we put the finishing touches on it. Uh, the difference between Roxim and Roxim Pro is the flight simulations where Roxim is three degrees of freedom, Roxim Pro is six degrees of freedom. And when I run a simulation, um, the simulations, um, seeing them in six degrees in an actual 3D environment, basically, um, is awesome. So that's why I'm using Roxim Pro because you, you've got to experience seeing them with six degrees of freedom. Uh, but the design portion is identical to Roxim. So what you see here today on the screen is identical to what you're using in the Roxim version that you have, Roxim version 10, which is our latest version. Okay, so what I need to do uh, is to open a design, and we're gonna open the Amarok file. So I'm gonna go to my open button, uh, and I'm just going to search for it. And it's not finding it. Probably because I spelled it wrong. Take out the C. There we go. And I'm looking for the Roxanne file, which I'm not seeing. Of course. Uh, no, that's not it. Let me go here to my rocks and designs and sort by name. There it is. I'm a rock. Get down there on the bottom. Okay, so now this will bring up the Amarok design. Oh, if you don't have the Amarok in your database, which is totally possible because it's a relatively new kit. So what you do is you go to the Apogee website and you just type in Amma. Rock, and, you, and it's just, you don't have to type the whole thing, it'll just bring up the Amarok. You click on that. Uh, now we're on the Amarok web page, and then just go here to Roxanne file, and it's going to jump down to the bottom of the page. And here is where you can download the file yourself. So uh, if I were to click on that, it would just start automatically downloading. Um, it'll just put it on, a, on your computer in some place where you can find it. Um, and then you can open it up, and that's what you'll be seeing here. So you're seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. Um, you can look at the rocket in three dimensions, and there's the rocket, just like uh, we're looking at here sitting on my desk. I'm gonna also look at it in a side view um, so that I can see where the center of gravity is and the center of pressure. Okay, so to choose a parachute, what we need to do is to go to the Roxim Design Components tab. And right now, this rocket already has a parachute in it. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and delete that. And it will ask me, do I really want to delete? And I'm going to say yes. So now it deleted the parachute out. And if we look at the two-dimensional drawing of the rocket, we don't see a parachute in here. These M's stand for mass object. A mass object is anything that doesn't have a defined shape, um, like a screw eye or an altimeter or something like that. Clay, clay for nose weight. Um, so that's what these little M's are. Um, to add the parachute, first what we have to do is we have to choose which tube in the rocket the parachute's going to go into. So on this particular design, I want it to go into this tube. 
they're here. Um, right here in the middle on the Amarok, um, I have an ejection baffle. So I, it can't go into this tube. Um, it has to go into this tube. Um, so my ejection baffle is sitting right here on the rocket. Um, so in the design, you have to tell Broxton it's not smart enough to know where that parachute is going to be. So I'm going to check the forward tube. And now I can select parachute. Over here on the right side, we have the parachute button. So just click on that. And what it's going to do is going to bring up a database of all the parachutes that are currently in Roxim. Um, it doesn't matter which one you're going to pick. Um, I'm just going to pick a 15 inch nylon parachute. I don't know if this is good or bad, uh, but it's just what I'm picking. Um, if your screen comes up small, it can be resized. And let me just resize it for you so that you're seeing you know, as much area as possible. Um, I don't want to cover up the buttons with my photo that's down here on the right. So, um, so right now, it's, um, there's a 15-inch parachute, and you can see it's over here, and it's in a different color. The rest of the color is kind of, the rest of the rocket the color is kind of grayed out because we're trying to show you exactly which component you're editing. So it's this orange box right now with the P in the middle. Um, right now you can see that um, it placed it at the front of the tube. So the problem with placing it at the front of the tube is that we have that shoulder there that's going to kind of interfere with it. So we need to move it back. Um, I know that this right here is three inches. So I have my handy ruler and it's upside down for you, but it's right side up for me. Uh, my shoulder is three inches long. So I know I need to move my parachute back at least three inches so that it's not interfering with that shoulder on the nose cone. All right, so and that's the location right here in the middle. So I'm gonna slide it back at least three inches. You can go back further if you want, which is totally fine. It's up to you. Um, I, so right now I have it at four inches. Um, and it's a six-sided parachute. So it's a hexagon shape and it's 15 inches in diameter. There's no spill hole. A spill hole in a parachute, so if you imagine your parachute, and if you have a hole in the middle, that's called a spill hole. And the purpose of the spill hole is not so much it does two things. One, it, it can make the rocket fall faster because it's, there's less surface area on the parachute. But what it really does is it um, helps stabilize the parachute. So, um, so if, you're, if your rocket's coming down, oscillating back and forth like this, putting a spill hole in the top will help stabilize that parachute and make it fall more vertically, um, which is good because you don't want your rocket as it's coming down, swinging like this, because right when it hits the ground, it's going to be like this, and it's going to go whack right on your fins. And then you're going to, that's where you bust your fins off. So you, you, you do like to, to come down nice and straight, and a spill hole will help that. Um, if you have a nylon parachute, uh, typically nylon parachutes are semi-porous. That means that some air can go through the fabric, and that also kind of helps stabilize the parachute. Now the Apogee parachutes, the our nylon ones, um, we specify them to be windproof, um, which means air won't go through them. They're, it's, it's a very tight weave. Um, some air, a little bit will go through, uh, but not a lot. Um, and these are nice parachutes. <laughs> um, you can cut holes into them, which I've done a lot of times. It's so... Every time I get one of our Apogee parachutes and I, I got my knife out ready to cut a hole, I said, oh man, cutting this nice parachute, that's just ah, sacrilegious. But I do it because I want it to be nice and stable or I want it to fall just a little bit faster. But in this particular case, I'm gonna start out with no spill hole. Um, and the location is four inches from the front of the only part, which is good. Uh, my descent rate right now, based on what Roxim knows about this rocket, is at 134 
feet per second. So this is pretty much screaming coming down. Um, so your question is, what's a good speed? Well, we get these preset rates right here, low, medium, and high. Um, these will give you, this will adjust the diameter of the parachute to have a lower, kind of like a safe descent speed. Um, so if I click on a high descent rate, this is going to give me around 15 feet per second. This is a pretty fast speed, uh, but it's a safe speed. So in safe means that it's not going to hurt anybody on the ground, and hopefully it's not going to hurt your fins. Uh, but it depends on the size of your fins. And um, if you have fins, you know, this rocket, we designed it so that the fins are going to be the last thing that hits the ground. See this stud here on the bottom? I don't know if you can see that. Let me make my screen bigger here. Okay. Well, it didn't come up. Let me go to this one. This one here. Okay. So let me zoom in. And if you see that stud on the bottom of the rocket, that is our um, engine retainer and we this is a threaded rod retainer the nice thing about these is, is they extend further back than the rocket motor and they usually hit first so when it hits the ground it'll hit that first so basically there's a there's a little nut in a washer which I'm holding in my hand that you probably can't see um, and I'm going to slide that in there like that and I'm going to put the washer on and the nut. I'm trying not to drop the nut or the, yeah. <laughs> and you just screw it on like that. And that locks your engine in. Now, now here the nozzle is going to hit first, but sometimes if you have like an Estes engine that doesn't have a nozzle sticking out the back, that post is still going to hit first. Um, which is a good thing because you want you want it to hit on something strong and not on the tip of your fin because that's where your tip your the, the fins get crunched. Um, also, if you have a swept back fin that hang back down on the rocket, those will usually hit first. Um, so we want to protect our fins. Um, so at a high rate of descent, like we're seeing right here, um, it may or may not damage the fin. Um, it depends. And I can't put it on the engine stand with the motor not in it. Okay, so let me go back to this screen. Um, let me move this. Oops, wrong one. I grabbed the wrong thing. Here we are. Okay, so now you can see the back end of my rocket. Um, so where was I? So, so if what it did when I clicked on the preset rate was it changed the diameter to 26 inches from 15. The only problem right here that you're probably noticing with the Roxen design is we don't have that big heavy rocket engine in there. And that's gonna, that weight, the, the motors are pretty heavy even when they're spent. Um, so that's gonna add a lot of weight to the rocket. So we do need to add the rocket engine into this design. So I'm going to click OK to accept this. And I got all this, that motor was leaking junk on my screen. <laughs> um, so we need to add a rocket motor. So I'm going to go here to prepare for launch. And I'm just going to load a motor. I'm not going to actually launch it. Choose the engine. And I'm going to choose a big motor. Uh, I like an F20. I like those white flames on them. So I'm going to choose an F20. Choosing the delay doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect anything. Click OK. And then just click. So basically it loaded in here to the back of the rocket. So you can see this screen right here. So it filled the hole. And I'm going to click OK. And if you come back here to the um, main screen of Roxin, you can't see that, but it's over here. We have the rocket engine on there right now. So let me make that bigger again. Did I screw up my screen? I got a large screen area here. Nope, 
Let's do it. Okay. Um, next, so let's go back to the parachute screen. So I'm just going to double click on our parachute. And now, um, notice before our descent rate was under 15 feet per second. Now by dropping the motor in there, now our descent rate went up because we have a heavier engine in there. Now a common question that people always ask is once you put the motor in there, what about the propellant? You know, because when the motor is fresh, there's a lot of propellant in there. That propellant weighs a lot too. But Roxim is smart enough to know that during descent, it needs to subtract out the weight of the propellant. So when you are looking at this screen right here, um, it knows that this is the weight of the rocket without the propellant. Um, so now look here on the screen. See this calculated descent mass is 11.3 ounces. So if I come back here to the main screen, if you look over here, the mass of the rocket with the rocket motor in it is 12.35 ounces. So there's a difference, and, and the difference is the weight of the propellant. Um, so it subtracted out the weight of the propellant, and that is what you're seeing here at the calculated descent mass. Um, so we, basically we've designed a parachute for this rocket already. Um, so if I click on the high descent rate one more time, so what you're going to see is the diameter change. So the diameter went up to get me under 15 feet per second. And if I change it to a medium descent rate, now my parachute size went up to almost 32 inch parachute. And our, if I click the low descent rate, now we're at a 36 inch parachute. And if, if I remember right, let me go back to the Amarok page. I think we started out with a 32 inch parachute. If you go back here, I'm on the Amarok web page on our website. And I just scroll all the way up to the top. And right here, 32 inch parachute, which is very close, you know, to that medium descent rate that Roxim recommended. So I hope that answered the question on how to use Roxim to change the parachute descent rate or to, to, to select the parachute based on your design. This is your design that it's designing for. Um, so if you want to go see a launch, let's, let's launch our rocket here. Let's click OK for that. And we've already loaded a motor in here. Um, I'm doing this for me because I just love seeing the three-dimensional um, flight profile of the rocket. Um, so we're going to eject the parachute, a maximum ejection delay. Um, I'm launching off of a rail uh, in this one. I'll change this to 60 inches, a five-foot rod. Um, I'm one degree from vertical, and I am launching to the north-northwest. Uh, my launch conditions, um, I don't know what launch site this is. Um, let's just find out by, by launching it. So I'm going to go to flight profile. Now this is Roxim Pro versus Roxim. So you're not going to see what this is when you run your own simulations. Um, I just wanted to see it myself. It's running the simulation. It's thinking about it. And this is where it brings up our new flight visualizer that's going to be in Roxanne Pro. And eventually we're going to have this as a standalone on our website. So here's the rocket sitting on the launch pad. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Oh, I'm covering up the uh, down here in the bottom. We call this the mini viewport. Um, this keeps um, the camera focused on the rocket so you can see it spinning as it's going up. Um, I can toggle that on and off with this button right here. I just usually leave it on. Um, right now, um, the view that you're going to see is the rocket staying in the middle of the screen. 
but what's cool about Roxon is, or the visualizer, is that you can zoom out and see where you're launching. So this, I'm not sure where this is, but this is a three-dimensional view. And the rocket right now is always going to be centered in the middle of the screen because I have this button right here. This is keep the rocket itself centered in the screen. And as the rocket moves up, just change the, the, uh, the surroundings to just make sure that the rocket stays in the middle of the screen. So I'm just using my scroll wheel right now just to zoom in and out. And then it has a launch button right here. And I'll click on that. And you can see the rocket taking off. It's going up and it's coasting. And it's staying centered, but I can still move around. So right now it, uh, the parachute has deployed because I can see something definitely changed up here at the top of the trajectory. And I'm going back out now, just go all, let it coast all the way back down to the ground. But if I want to zoom in and actually see my parachute, I'll click over here at the plus button just to zoom in. And there's my rocket under its nice parachute. And I'm just moving it around, just kind of seeing what the terrain looks like. And I'll just restart the simulation. I'm going to zoom out. As you zoom out, it's, try, it's just trying to zoom out and keep everything in the middle of the screen. So that's kind of why it's a little jumpy right there. Um, if I pause it and zoom out, it won't be so bad. Okay, see this red line right here is the ground track of the rocket. And it looks like that rocket is going to land in the trees right there. This is the beauty of Roxim Pro and the Flight Visualizer, because now we have a better perspective on, are we going to lose our rocket or not? If I land in these trees, it looks like a pretty dense clump of trees right there. Um, there's a good chance that I'm going to lose it. Um, so what I would probably want to do in this particular case is probably angle the rocket a little bit more. And I don't think I'm going to need to angle it too much just to keep it out of these trees. Um, so let me go ahead and do that just to kind of show you the power of Roxin Pro. And I'll go here to simulation or starting state. So right now I had it angled one degree from vertical. And I'll just grab this slider bar and I'll go 12 degrees. And let's do that again. Just see what that flight profile looks like just by angling it a little bit more. See if we can keep it out of the trees. We have no comments so far on the uh, on the Facebook Live. Um, I'm here to answer your questions, and if, if you're not going to answer questions, I'm just going to play around, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, so ask your questions. Um, so here is the same launch. So you can see that the rocket is angled a lot more now. Um, down here is the compass rose, and. I said that I had it angled to the north. North should be up. I'm angled in the wrong direction, I think. Um, yeah, there's my trees that I landed in the last time. Uh, I'm going to switch to a different view. So the, the view we watched the last time was the rocket centered in the screen. Um, I'm going to I choose a different camera angle. I have four different camera angles to choose from here. I'm going to choose the one that says show trajectory. And so basically it's going to keep the trajectory in the center of the screen. Um, so the rocket will no longer be in the center of the screen. It could actually drift out, uh, but it allows me a little bit finer control of, of, you know, just keeping things the way I want to see them. So let's launch it again. Oh, okay. So it took off. It's, you can see it's going out of the screen. Maybe I chose the wrong clump of trees. <laughs> it's arcing over. You can see this little puff of smoke up here in the sky, and it's kind of dissipating. Um, we're kind of 
losing the rocket in the trees right there, it's kind of hard to see, so I'll just move it around so it makes it a little easier for you to see. Um, as the rocket's coming down, it's still going towards these trees. Yikes. Oh, I'm even worse than I was before. <laughs> oh, that was a lot of fun, though. Uh, this is kind of like uh, as much fun as a real launch, but without your friends being there. Um, so that is the Roxon Launch Visualizer. Okay, Gregory King, I'm walking over here in my comments, says, not necessary about parachutes, but do you have any advice about booster stage recovery? Okay, that's a good question there, Gregory. Um, I'm at work on lunch break. I will watch it later, but thanks for the demos of the software, says Emil. So thank you, Emil, for that. So Gregory King, two-stage rockets, uh, recovery system in boosters. Now, this gets a little bit harder, um, but it can be done. Um, you have to, it depends on the size of your rocket. Um, so now let's go to... Let's save this design. And I want to open up another design. Um, let's see what I got. Let's see what I have that's a two-stage rocket. Um, I got a three-stage with strap-on boosters. That's a really fun one. Um, to, to, to test the launch visualizer, we tried to put it through all of its paces. I'll just show you that real quick, what we were trying to do. Um, so this is a three-stage rocket. You see one stage, two stage, three stage, and then the bottom stage also has strap-on booster pods. Um, so technically this would be, this could, could answer Gregory's question about recovery devices in booster stages or pods that are falling off. Um, I'm just thinking ahead here. Uh, what I just showed you about the parachute, because I've never thought about this question before. This is a really good question. Um, so let's let's delete the third stage right now. So I'm going to go oh, to delete a stage. So here is where you'll delete a stage. So right now, as the number of stages is three, I'm going to change that to two, and when I click on the two-stage rocket, it's going to pop up a warning saying, do you really want to delete that third stage because you're going to lose a lot of information. And there's my warning. And I'm going to say yes, I'm going to delete it. And it deleted it. Um, so right now it's showing two stages. I can go to one stage, two stage. And if I go to three stages, there's nothing there. So displaying it in three stages, which is this button right here, doesn't really affect this particular design, but if you have a three-stage rocket and you want to see it, um, this is where you'd see it. Um, so this rocket, um, it kind of looks like the Apogee Rising Star. So let me go to the Apogee website. Give me a new browser window. I thought I had a browser window open. Here we go. So I got a rising star. So here's the rising star, and that looks vaguely similar to this rocket, except that it has, this one has four fins instead of three, and it has a booster stage that also has four fins on it. Um, now, when we go up here, I'm not sure if the parachute design for a booster stage is going to work like it worked for just the sustainer. So I'm always discovering new things about rocks and thinking about situations that we've never thought of before. Like this question here from Gregory is what happens when you use the parachute design screen for a booster stage? Um, right now I'm looking at this upper stage. And it does have a 32-inch parachute inside of it. I go here to the side view. So there's my 32-inch parachute, which is the P. stands for parachute. If it was a streamer, 
it would be the same rectangle with an S in it for streamer. And it just kind of gives you a rough dimensional size for that item. Um, but if I look in here on my booster stage, and there is no recovery device inside of that. So we need to put one in there. So I'm gonna come down here to the booster stage and I'm gonna select the body tube. And I'm going to prepare, um, I need to add the parachute like we did before. Um, let's choose a Apogee 15 inch parachute. So it's showing right here right now. I'm kind of covering it with my, my face. So let me move this over a little bit. So here's the parachute. Let's see if I can make it just a little bit bigger. Here's the parachute. Um, I am looking at the descent mass. And it's showing me my descent mass for this stage is 3.9 ounces. Hey, maybe this is working. Let's test that by putting a motor in there. So I'm going to click OK for now. We're going to come back to this screen. I want to just load some rocket engines in here. Um, so I click load engines. It's asking for 24 millimeter motor. So I'm going to choose a motor. And I'll just select an Estes D12. Um, and let's say a D12 zero. And it loaded it up in the sustainer stage, but not in my booster stage. So if I go, if I move this screen out of the way, just so I can see the back end of the rocket. So it's loaded into the sustainer stage, but not the booster stage. Okay. So to load it in the booster stage, um, here's a little trick that I use all the time. Is I'll load one motor in and then hit that load all button. And what it does is it takes the, the first motor and just loads it into every motor mount that is the same diameter. So this is a 24 millimeter motor. And if I, if the, if the bottom stage had a 29 millimeter motor mount in it, it wouldn't have loaded it. But since it's also a 24 millimeter, it also loads it. And it's just a little faster way to load motors. Uh, but now my upper stage, it has a zero second delay. We're on a booster stage. That's where you want a zero second delay on the booster stage because that controls the ejection charge of the booster controls when it stages. Um, so right now I want it to stage immediately after booster burnout. Um, but my upper stage, I need it to coast. Um, so I'm going to allow it to coast all the way up to seven seconds. And I'm just going to click OK. I just want to go back here to my parachute design screen. And I'll select my parachute again. And now my mass went up to five ounces. Where if I look over here on the main screen, down here on the far left, my total mass right now is 14 ounces. So this is actually working. This is great. So it's actually picking the right size parachute for the particular stage that we're working on. I didn't think it was going to work, but it does. Um, so now my 15 inch parachute is coming down at 18 feet per second. So this is pretty slow, um, we'll, but we'll leave it. But if you wanted a lower rate, you could go to a lower rate. Um, and if I wanted to go even lower than that, um, I would just take this outer diameter and just squeeze it down until I get to a descent rate that, whoa, something's going on here. My diameter is going down, my, my descent rate is going, oh, that's right. <laughs> my descent rate is going faster, that should be right. The smaller the parachute, the faster it should be falling. So it's smaller diameter, faster descent rate. I was, I was thinking in reverse there. Um, I would like to get around for, um, okay, I got about 21 feet per second, and that gives me a 12 inch parachute, which, which is fine for me. And it's made out of ripstop nylon um, using Apogee bread carpet string for its suspension lines. This is fine. Um, my color right now, I've got a yellow parachute, which is why you saw it as yellow. I'm going to change the 3D color so when we go into the flight visualizer, we can see it as, the, as a different color. So there will be a red parachute back here. 
Uh, this is off the screen again. So it's right here. This is my parachute. Okay, so I like that parachute. I need to quit somewhere. I got all these notifications popping up on my computer and there. I wonder if they're annoying you as much as they're annoying me. Let me quit that. You know, I'll stop doing that. Let me quit this other one. I have Slack and mail going on at the same time. Um, okay, so where are we? So we got two parachutes in the rocket right now. Um, the bottom one and the top one. This one right here is just called parachute. Let me open that up. I hate using generic names because that tells me nothing about this parachute. So this is, I'm going to call it the booster parachute. So now when I go to the parts tree right here, now I know it's my booster parachute, not my sustainer parachute. And let's go to launch. Um, I like that launch field. So we'll go to the same launch field. Um, so under flight events, now I've got other options. Um, in Roxim Pro, we can control staging, uh, but um, it's similar to Roxim. It's going to stage at the maximum ejection delay. So when the delay fires on the booster stage motor, it's going to stage, um, which is what normally you'd like. Um, so we're going to leave that alone, and we're just going to look at our parachutes. So we have two parachutes, which are the P's. So we have a 32 inch parachute and that's our sustainer and you can see it's in the top stage right here and then we have our booster parachute which is in our booster stage um, so the sustainer parachute i'm going to deploy a maximum ejection delay just like you normally would and um, and then our booster parachute this is this feature that you're seeing right now is limited to roxin pro um, but i want to deploy it at a time relative to stage separation. Um, and I can't remember which one it's going to use. I'm going to say let's deploy it one second after stage separation. Um, starting state, we're, let's go more straight up. Um, and we're still launching to the, this should be to the northwest. And let's see our flight profile, see what this looks like. So while it's thinking, oh, oh there's a bunch of messages that came in. Uh, John Sislak asked, do you have a way to simulate X-form parachutes? Um, and also, how does one simulate two parachutes on one rocket? That one I can do real easy. Um, and James writes, I really need to get the upgrade. <laughs> Um, it's Roxin Pro is not yet. It's coming soon. You're just kind of getting a sneak peek here. Um, just so that I can show you um, what, what you'll actually see in real life. Um, Roxin Pro is more realistic. Um, and Erica Rat asks, does Roxin take motor mass of reloadable casings into consideration? The mass changes you were talking about are for black powder, but what about reloadables? And the answer is yes on that one. Erica, um, all that it's concerned about is the propellant. Um, it knows the propellant, it knows the total mass of the rocket, reloadable or single use, and it will just subtract out the propellant weight when it's calculating the descent mass. So Erica, that should answer your question on that. Um, okay, so where did I go there? Um, it loaded the flight visualizer on my alternate screen over here. So here's my flight visualizer, my two-stage rocket. Let me rotate it around so you can see it's two stages. Um, I'm going to go to the trajectory view. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then move it down, rotate it out a little bit so we can get a little bit more of an angle here. Uh, the rocket takes off. It launches. Okay, now I'm going to stop it right there. Okay, so I want you to look at this trajectory line, which is the black line. Let me change the color of that so it's a little easier to see. Uh, here's my color wheel down here. I find that a bright green makes it a little easier to see. So here's the trajectory line of the rocket. And you see that there's a yellow line popping off of that. 
And that is our booster stage falling away. Um, let me show you one, well, one more thing here. I'm going to say extrude this path back down to the ground. So what that did was it made lines from the trajectory down to the um, the line down here that follows the tra terrain of the earth. Um, but each of these lines is one second apart. So if we zoom in right here, um, so here's where the booster came off and it arced over the top. Here's its apogee point is that red dot. And let me move this down a little bit. And you can see, I can see that there's a parachute attached to it. So the parachute is out. Um, it kind of got obscured by the smoke there as it was coming down. Um, you can see the, the, the ground path of the booster stage is different from the ground path of the sustainer. Um, and the sustainer parachute has not popped out yet at this point in the flight. Okay, so to find out where it popped out, what I do is I look at, oops, I'm going a little bit too fast here, is a change in the trajectory path. So here we have this, it's a nice curve, and then all of a sudden it becomes straight. And right here, it's right in the middle of the smoke, is the, uh, where the parachute popped out on the sustainer of this rocket. So let me zoom back out and we'll see where this one landed, see if we we're back in the trees again. Ah, in the trees again. Okay, so that shows um, that the parachute of the booster stage is coming out and we're finding out where it's landing over here. It's nice and there. This is going to be easy to recover. That sustainer is going to be a little bit harder because it's over here in the trees. Okay, so that was um, Gregory's question and um, John's about how does one simulate two parachutes on one rocket? So let's go back here to Roxon. And John, what this is called is dual deployment. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back here to my rocket design components. Now, typically on dual deployment, the parachutes are a different diameter because uh, we want the rocket, we want to stay out of those trees. Um, so we want it to come down faster. Um, so if I go my, my current parachute right now and I open it up, um, I'm coming down at 10 feet per second. So I want to come down faster so that the rocket's not drifting as far into the trees. So my second parachute or my second recovery device needs to be smaller. So I'm going to put it in the same tube as my parachute. And now I either select a parachute or a streamer. Now in this case, I want it to come down really fast. So instead of using a parachute, John, I'm going to use a streamer. Um, and I'm just going to choose one from the database. And like the parachute, um, we should be able to size it. So if I make my length 31 inches, my descent rate should be about 60 feet per second. Um, and let's change the color of this. Let's make it a blue streamer. And I'll also make it blue in here. I'm going fast because we're running low on time, but I hope you, you can always replay this uh, Facebook Live to see what my clicking was. So I'll just click OK, which is kind of off on the bottom of the stream, screen there. So it added a streamer right here, and you can see it, it is this blue one right here. Uh, again, it's interfering with my shoulder on the nose cone uh, back here. So I would have to adjust that further back. Uh, but I'm going to leave it for right now because I showed you how to do that already. I just want to show you um, how to set this up uh, when you go to flight simulation. Um, and this should be the same as it is in RockSim. I'm thinking about that. No, it's not. It's different. Um, so I'm going to save this. 
Uh, save this design. Oh, and I just I just saved it and I just overwrote my three stage rocket with with pods. So that's gone. <laughs> I'll have to recreate that rock des design file. Um, I want to open up regular rocks though because this is going to be different. And I want to show you exactly how you do it in Roxo. Okay, so what we're bringing up now is the current version of Roxo, which is very similar to Roxo Pro, as you can see. And I'm going to open the design. Um, and in the Roxo designs, three stage with strap on, although now it's two stage with strap on. I'm going to click open. And there's the design. So I got it, actually I got it open up in two different programs right now, which is totally allowable. So I have my my parachute and my streamer. And so now I'm going to go to prepare for launch. Uh, let me cancel out of this. I want to go. I want to load. I want to show you another way to load motors really fast. So uh, you can go to the last simulation. Remember the last time we had a D120 and a D127. I just highlight that, and I do a right click with my mouse. I can say load engines, and it just loaded those engines in the Roxon that fast. And so now when I go up here to the screen, I don't have to go choosing my engines one at a time. Um, I'm finding I'm doing this trick faster and faster now um, because I just want to run my simulations as quickly as I can to see what's going on. Okay, so under flight events, let me make this bigger here. So this is a little bit different from what we saw on Rocks and Pearl. Um, so right now we have the sustainer stage. Um, we have a 32 inch parachute. And also in the sustainer stage, we have the streamer. So now my streamer, I want it to deploy at Apogee or engine burnout. Um, so I'll just choose maximum ejection delay because I think this rocket was arcing over and coming down a little bit when the parachute came out, which is totally fine because that that decreases the altitude. That means less drift with the wind. Um, now my my booster parachute or the sustainer parachute. I want to deploy at an uh, at a specific altitude. So on this, I'm going to say my altitude. Let's call it 200 feet up in the air. Well, first, how high does this rocket go? So I'm looking at that last simulation when we ran, it was about 790 feet. So, so I'm just making sure that the altitude that I put in right here um, is less than that altitude. Um, so now what should happen is the streamer should come out first at engine ejection, which is gonna be a little bit below Apogee, and then it's the, um, the sustainer parachute will come out at a lower altitude. And now my booster stage parachute um, I'm going to deploy at a time after stage separation, and I think we had it set at one second before. I'll just type in 1.0 seconds and hit the tab key for it to accept that value. Um, so now I need to check my launch conditions here uh, because we're in a different program. So we had a 60 inch launch rod, and we had it almost straight up. Um, this one has no wind. I'm going to make it uh, eight mile an hour wind. I think I showed you this before. So basically what I did was custom speed range. My low wind speed and my high wind speed are both eight miles an hour. And what this does is it creates a constant wind blowing across my field at eight miles an hour. If I choose one of these other ones, it's going to have a, a low wind speed and a high wind speed that are different. So that the wind can be coming across, come really fast, and then slow down, um, and then go fast again. Um, kind of like in real life, because you get these gusts of wind that come through your launch site. But right now, for this simulation, I just want a constant 8 mile an hour wind blowing across my field. Um, and then I'm going to go hit Flight Profile. And it runs the simulation, and it brings up the 2D Flight Profile. So now we're not seeing it in 3D anymore. Um, and we don't know how far away these trees really are, but we can at, at least we can see the trajectory of the rocket taking off. Um, so I'll go ahead and launch it by hitting the launch button. The rocket takes off. Here's my booster stage coming down here by my cursor. Rocket's arcing over the top. 
There's the streamer, and it's falling like a rock. And when it gets down to 200 feet, which is right here, the parachute should come out. Um, it didn't change the icon, but uh, we can tell that something definitely happened because our trajectory line has changed from, um, you draw a line vertically here, now it's more horizontal. So I hope that answered your question, John, about how to um, do two devices in the same rocket. And this is called dual deployment. And to do this in real life, you're gonna need a dual deployment altimeter um, because you can't do it with just the ejection charge built into the rocket motor. Okay, so and then we have another question from Gregory King. Does Roxim have the ability to know if the ejection charge is powerful enough to shoot off the nose cone? And the answer is no, um, it does not. Um, that, that depends it's my, my tea, um, on how tight this nose cone is on the rocket. Um, if you put tape around your nose cone and you really wedge it on there really tight, um, the ejection charge might not be enough to push it, push it off. Um, so it really depends on you know, the setup of your rocket. Roxon doesn't know that. It, it doesn't know how tight fitting this nose cone is. It doesn't know if there might be shear pins holding the nose cone on. It doesn't know if there's vent holes in there. Um, to really know that question, Gregory, you need to ground test your rocket. Um, on our website, I think it's on the webpage for the level two rocket kit. There's a video on how to do a ground test. So I'm back here on the Apogee website. If I need the spell right, level two. So here's the level two rocket. Um, it's part number 07230. So if you type that into our search bar, it will bring up the level two rocket. Let me scroll down here to the bottom. I think that's where I saw it last. And I'm just trying to do this from memory. And it's not there. Um, hmm. Where would I find that video? Um, might be under, I'm looking for my uh, dual deployment eBay's. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It might be here. Prepping the rocket. I'm looking at our videos that are on the dual uh, level two page because we did a whole series on, on prepping this rocket for flight. And we did one video on doing a ground test. Let me see if it's in another place in our advanced construction videos. If you go here to advanced construction videos and then go to all videos, this will bring up a list of all the videos that we've made. And I'm going to do a find on this page, not doing the search, but specifically finding on this page. And to do that, um, on your keyboard, if you're on an Apple, it's Command F. And if you're on Windows, it's Control F. And it will bring up a, a search bar that's specifically looking for a specific word. Um, and the word I'm looking for is uh, ground. And it found six words for ground. And it's not finding it. Um, so I know it would be called ground test. Um, if you want this video, I will put a link to it uh, when we post this um, on our YouTube channel because this will be done later and then I can put a link to this ground testing of the parachute. So ba basically what you do to a ground test is you put an ejection charge, not a, not a rocket motor, just the ejection charge. So you got to do this loose fitting. Um, you put that in there, the parachute in there. And then you fire it off on the ground while it's horizontal 
and you have something soft over here, like a whole bunch of pillows or you know a bunch of uh, old blankets. So you're firing the nose cone into that so it doesn't hurt anything. You're not scuffing up your nose cone. Just to make sure that the nose cone comes off. And if the nose cone comes off, um, then you know that the amount of ejection charge that's in your rocket is enough to push it off. If it comes off too fast, and you'll know it because it's just like a cannon, then you want to back off on the amount of ejection charge you're putting in there. So hopefully that answers your question, Gregory. Uh, let's see, are there any last minute comments? Um, Gregory also asked, thanks to answering all my questions, Tim, I was looking for a payload nose like the Courier. It has a BT-55 tube. The Courier nose is a little tight for BT-55, so I'm making my own adapter. So I'm looking for a payload nose like the Courier. Okay, so that's like, a, like an egg lofting nose cone. Um, and the answering for that is we don't have an egg lofting nose cone that fits on a BT-55. Um, you would have to make something custom made for that. Um, that's, that's a good question, how to custom make a nose cone for that. Um, Gregory, he, well, he's making his own little adapter. That's actually a pretty good way to do it, is to make an adapter um, from that particular nose cone to the, to the tube. Um, if I was to make a nose cone myself, um, I would probably either carve it out of balsa wood. So you, you start with a chunk of balsa wood and then you would cut it in half, hollow it out, um, and then put some kind of coupler so you can put it back together. That's going to be hard, but it can be done. Another way is to 3D print it. Um, that would be easier, uh, but you do have to have access to CAD to do that. Um, it is possible. Um, that would probably be the way that I would do it. Um, if I was making this for production, um, then I would do it out of vacuform plastic. I would actually mold it. And that gets a lot more involved because now you'd have to make molds and you have to have a vacuform machine, with, which is an oven, which you take a sheet of plastic, you strap it into this oven, you heat up the plastic, when the plastic gets hot and it starts sagging, then you ram it down over the mold that's inside of it and it conforms to the mold and you get the nice nose cone shape. That's really involved. It's, it's more art than science. Um, I don't recommend it, but if you want to produce a lot of them, that's the way to go. Um, our, uh, we have a rocket kit called the, oh, what's the name of it? It's not the, um, let's go here to shop. Model rocket kits. And then I want to go sort by uh, manufacturer, rockets by manufacturer. And I want to look in the Apogee ones. Um, it's not the eggs. Egg, egg tosser. So if I click on egg tosser, we got so many rockets, I can't even remember them all. Um, so here's the egg tosser. And you can see this nose cone. This is what uh, Gregory was talking about is how do you have a nose cone that's one size and you want to get it onto a specific tube diameter. Um, but this is a vacuform nose cone uh, made the way that I just described. Okay, so we are out of time. Um, we've gone an hour and four minutes already, and I want to want to cut it off here. Um, if there's any more questions, you can put them onto this Facebook Live right now. We'll get to them the next time. Um, if you ever if you have questions in between time between now and next Friday, go ahead and email them to us. And we'll put them on the list of questions that we need to answer for you. Um, so again, you're watching Facebook Live from Apogee Components. Um, if you've never heard of us before, our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. Um, hopefully you see it here on the top of my screen, apogeerockets.com. So that ends this Facebook. Uh, thanks for coming, and we'll see you next week at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, which is 12 noon on the East Coast.